morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Do you recognize that scripture? Yeah. yeah, that was the last week. So, that's... so we're going to do a little repeat a little bit and enlarge and uh, carry the ball down the road a little bit and let John pick it up next week and carry it further. Um, that piano music is beautiful. Um, I used to let that foot pedal squeak bother me. But you know what? I just sit there and I, I imagine that I was on a ship in a hammock and I could hear the people were, you know, playing music. And you know what? All the all the disappointment went away. It was pretty nice. So, anyway, now I'm not saying this really to pick on Don. Although last week, when the scripture was on the bulletin here, the, or the, not the bulletin, the board, the board, it was written incorrectly. It didn't, it had a word omitted. Um, his faith, the word his was missing. And I'm only saying that to allow you people to realize that you shouldn't take anything for granted. Anything that's said that people do Look it up for yourself. Seek out and show yourself approved by seeking the scriptures. All right. Um, who is the Lord of your life? How do you know? Because you have faith in Him. We serve Him. We serve Him. He is your Creator. He is the creator. He's our example. Okay, he's our example. All right. How often is he the Lord of your life? Is he the Lord of your life when you're upset about a creaking piano? <laughs> is he the Lord of your life when some guy cuts you off? Look, I drive a big truck around. People cut me off all the time. They think it's just something you're supposed to do. You know? And if I was upset every time somebody cut me off, I don't think I don't think I'd ever have a Lord in my life. Not the one I want anyway. Anyways, let's get to it. Habakkuk 2 and verse 3, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. What is this talking about? We, just, we discussed it last week. Something was happening around the world, right? A worldwide awakening was happening, right? We name this as the great disappointment, right? All around the world, people were realizing that something was taking place. And many people thought that it was Jesus coming to the earth. Yeah. But actually, it was Jesus moving from the holy place to the most holy place. Correct? Yeah. Now, I want you all to realize that Seventh-day Adventists were not around in 1844. Yeah. Okay? So, Adventists never set dates. Although people do say, oh, them Adventists, they're the date set people that go to church on Saturday. Adventists have never set a date. The Adventist church came out of the great disappointment. And you stop and think about that. When you have all these people together and they're supposedly, they supposedly have a Lord of their life that they're serving and seeking and want to see come, right? But at this disappointment, when he doesn't come, what happens to their faith? Where did they go? Most of them, right, left, didn't they? They left the faith. But yet, there was a small company who dug their heels in. Right? And they said, look, we may have gotten something wrong here, but the Lord was working in our lives. There's something more here. We okay. have to dig in. And they spent nights, all night long in prayer, as your Lord did. Did he not spend all night in prayer? 
how do you think you really get blessed? By spending time with the Father. That's how Jesus got blessed. That's how we get blessed. Look, at, when I really wanted to know something, when I, you know, God, we talked about a Sabbath school today, being hot or cold. You know, God has respect for somebody who's hot or cold. Why? Because they're honest at heart, right? They're honest at heart. They're either cold or they're hot. Listen, if you really want to know something from God, you dig your heels in and you pray without ceasing until you get the answer. And I tell you, when you want the answer from God and you want a relationship with God more than you want your next breath, you will get what you're looking for. <clears throat> this is a really simple statement, and it seems kind of simple, but, you know, people find what they're looking for. What are you looking for? You, you need to ask yourself that sometimes. You know, when you're upset and you don't seem like the Lord is the Lord of your life. Because this carnal nature that we have, this thing just doesn't go away. It doesn't die easy. It seeks dominance. You know, you lust either for the flesh or you lust for the spirit. But you will lust, brothers and sisters. And you're not your own. You have been bought with a price. Now, this is an interesting thing, that the Adventists came out of this great disappointment. But they came away with what? Great truths. Right? What is present truth? What does present truth mean to you? I'm talking to a bunch of Adventists here. Somebody ought to be able to help me out. It's where Christ is located. Where is Christ is located. Okay, anybody else? The present truth? Yes, Brother Jim. As, as we came along from 1844 and more light was revealed, it's referring to that, and there was a publication they had out back then called The Present Truth. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead, Jim. Present truth is truth specific for that day and time. Fantastic. So present truth for today would be what John just said, right? Now, many of the churches will say, don't want to continue. Isn't truth progressive? Yes. I mean, don't we learn things and then we know? I mean, I didn't always know because I wasn't raised that way that lobster is a terrible thing to eat. And I used to eat it. I didn't. Dem I Democrats are progressive. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'm not going there. I haven't got any respect for any of them anymore. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter what they are. But I used to soak it up with butter and just eat it up. Loved it. I didn't know any better. One day, some guy shares Adventism with me. And I'm not so sure about all this stuff. Well, I'm in my truck. And I prayed. I really prayed that the Lord would show me the truth. And I mean, I prayed. I'm not talking about this kind of haphazard stuff. I mean, I really wanted to know if these people were telling me the truth. And I asked the Lord to show me, without a doubt, so that I would know. Will I eat that lobster? I don't know how long it was. I can't remember. It was a while back. Half an hour, an hour up the road. I was in a rest area for four hours sick than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> so you know the devil, he says, ah, oh, yeah, that was just a fluke, no big deal. So the next day, I stop at a truck stop and get a piece of pizza, a couple pieces of pizza, and I told them to put as much sausage as they could find on it. And I told the Lord, and I really prayed. I said, Lord, you know, that could have been a fluke. I really want to know. You need to show me. You know what happened? <laughs> I ate them two pieces of pizza, and the same thing happened again. Here I am in another rest area for four hours. Sicker than I've ever been in my life. And I said, okay. You got my attention, Lord. Then you know what the hardest hurdle for me was after that? was the whole Sabbath issue. The Sabbath. Because I had my whole family eat me up. You're in a cold. You're in this wicked, stupid, crazy thing. 
you're not looking like the rest of the world? Hmm, there's an idea. <laughs> Anyways, so I prayed earnestly. I prayed more about the Sabbath than I've ever prayed about anything in my life. And I prayed so hard that I cried myself to sleep. And I woke up that morning soaked. I mean bed soaked. I'm my hair, what little hair I got left, <laughs> soaked. And I come up, just look, I was laying flat, and I come up and envision, I don't know if you want to call this whatever it was, the Bible was laid out in my lap. I can't tell you what scripture it was. I think it was Isaiah or something. But the word seventh day came right out of the Bible, and I literally could see it floating through the air off the Bible and went right into my head like that. And I said, whoa. All right, God. You've got my attention. Been here ever since. Doesn't mean I've always walked perfectly. <laughs> the Lord's been doing a lot in my life, and a lot lately. Really lately. Because the time is short, brothers and sisters. <laughs> this thing is wrapping up. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on in the world, but it's crazy out there. It's absolutely crazy. Now, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Whose faith is this we're talking about? Christ Jesus' Jesus faith. And I want to prove that to you. I want you to turn your Bibles to Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and has not denied, what's it say? My faith. My faith. Jesus qualified that, didn't he? My faith. Listen, brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ died for all people. He justified all people at the cross. Okay? They have all been given pardon. But that doesn't mean all people are sanctified. That doesn't mean, you know, to have you in Christ is one thing. But to have Christ in you, <coughs> that's the hope of glory. That's what's going to carry you. Because the Lord God will not deny himself. You see, if I walk up to the gates and I try to get in, they're not going to let me in. Right? But if Jesus is with me, what do they do? Oh, you're with him? <coughs> Anyways. Will God take second place? So why do we give him second place? Why do we? What or, or who is in first place? Examine yourself. We talked about Sabbath school class about looking in the mirror while you're in sin. You know, a lot of people say that the, the eye is a window to the soul. Sometimes I look at that, my eye in the mirror and I can't stand what I see. It's scary. I know what I'm capable of. In and of myself without Christ? Woo. Each and every one of you, I hope you realize that. You're capable of the most abhorrent evil possible without the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we start thinking that we can do something in and of ourselves, we will certainly fall. Certainly fall. Jesus Christ, we talked about it today in Sabbath school. I wish you didn't miss Sabbath school because it was wonderful. That Jesus didn't do any miracles in and of himself. He did it through the Holy Spirit. Why and how could he do that? Because he was completely dependent upon his Father. Didn't Jesus say greater works than these you will do? Hmm. How come we're not doing it? How come we're not doing it? Why are we still here 171 years later 
past 1844. What's going on? What's going on? Isn't the judgment happening? Does the darkness have any power over the light? Why? They can't coexist. Think about it. If I brought darkness into this room of light, what would happen to it? It's gone. It can't survive, can it? And if I bring a light, into any darkness, what does the darkness do? The Bible says it what? I love the word, it flees. The darkness flees. That's what the devil does. He flees. He knows he's a defeated foe. If you're walking full of the Holy Ghost, you are in complete victory. Complete victory. Do you know that you could even understand the thoughts of somebody else if you, the Holy Spirit desires that you do that? Think about that. Peter read the minds of some people, didn't he? Ananias and Sapphira, huh? Why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? That's exactly what Peter said. What do they do? <coughs> Drop dead. Why, don't, why does the church have that kind of power today that it had back in Peter's day? Why is it? Where is our love? Where is our first place? Think about this room and all these people that are here, all these souls. If we all had Jesus as first and foremost in everything that we thought did, where would we be? Wouldn't we love others and consider others better than ourselves? Wouldn't we be willing to give whatever it took to help the other instead of condemning one another? My wife gets at me because I'm some judgmental person sometimes, I guess, and I don't even realize it. She says, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I have to go, oh. and then I hear it. Sometimes you don't hear it. But when you have a wife like mine, you'll hear it because she'll say, what did you just say? She doesn't condemn me. She just says, what did you just say? I think that's the way Jesus teaches, like my wife teaches. I think... Jesus uses my wife to teach me. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> so why should we have any fear? If light expels darkness and we're children of the light, why should we have any fear? Shouldn't we go out in holy boldness and take on the day? Why are we afraid? I mean, so many people are just afraid of the gospel, even. I mean, look, when you get somebody new into the church and they're all excited and they're on fire, people are like, whoa, slow down, man. <laughs> they want to cool them off, don't they? Yeah, what's the matter with them? Yeah, what's, what's the problem? Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4, 17. First Peter four seventeen. I still hear pages rustling. Good to see you, brother Bob. Missed you, Sabbath school. For the time has come that what? Judgment. Judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? I want to read you a little something. This is from early writings, which goes way back to 1882. It is from, it is from the chapter of end of the 2300 days, which is what we're talking about here in our... Bible verse. I saw a throne, and on it sat the Father and the Son. I gazed on Jesus' countenance and admired his lovely person. The Father's person I could not behold, for a cloud of glorious light covered him. I asked Jesus, 
if his father had a form like himself. He said he had, but I could not behold it. For he said, if you should once behold the glory of his person, you would cease to exist. Before the throne, I saw the Advent people, the church, and the world. I saw two companies, one bowed down before the throne, deeply interested, while the other stood uninterested and careless. Those who were bowed before the throne would offer up their prayers and look to <coughs> Jesus. Then he would look to his father and appear to be pleading with him. A light would come from the father to the son and from the son to the praying company. Then I saw an exceeding bright light come from the father to the son. And from the son it waved over the people before the throne. But few would receive this great light. Many came out from under it and immediately resisted it. Others were careless and did not cherish the light. And it moved off from them. Some cherished it and went and bowed down with a little praying company. This company all received the light and rejoiced in it. And in their countenances shone with, with its glory. I saw the Father rise from the throne and in a flaming chariot go into the holy of holies within the veil and sit down. Then Jesus rose up from the throne and the, mo and the most of those who were bowed down around arose with him. I did not see one ray of light pass from Jesus to the careless multitude after he rose. And they were left in perfect darkness. Those who arose when Jesus did kept their eyes fixed on him as he left the throne and led them out a little way. Then he raised his right arm and we heard his lovely voice saying, wait here, I am going to my father to receive the kingdom. Keep your garments spotless and in a little while I will return from the wedding and receive you to myself. Then a cloudy chariot with wheels like flaming fire, surrounded by angels, came to where Jesus was. He stepped into the chariot and was born to the holiest, where the Father sat. There I beheld Jesus, a great high priest, standing before the Father. On the hem of his garment was a bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. Those who rose up with Jesus would send up their faith to him and the holiest and pray, My Father. Give us thy spirit. Then Jesus would breathe upon them the Holy Ghost. In that breath was light, power, much love, joy, and peace. I turned to look at the company who were still bowed down before the throne. They did not know that Jesus had left it. Satan appeared to be by the throne, tarrying, trying, to carry on the work of God. I saw them look up to the throne and pray, Father, give us thy spirit. Satan would breathe upon them an unholy influence. In it there was light and much power, but no sweet love, joy, and peace. <laughs> Satan's object was to keep them deceived and draw to draw them back and to deceive God's children. Do you see the difference there? No sweet love, joy, and peace. Why is that? What happened in 1844? There is some people that stayed in one place. And there's some other people that followed Jesus to the holy place. The most holy place. What's in the most holy place, brothers and sisters? The mercy seat, right? The Ark of the Covenant in which the mercy seat sits upon. And what's inside the Ark? The Ten Commandments. And what's in the middle of the Ten Commandments? The Holy Sabbath day. Right? This thing's always been about worship. It's going to end about worship. Listen, I'm sorry to say, but there isn't another way. Although lots of people in, the, in your churches out there will say, oh yeah, there's all kinds of ways. There is no other way, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, I am 
the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Turn your Bibles to Revelation 14. And I'm just going to take a little time here because you guys got me on up here so early that I've got extra time. We're good to go. <laughs> Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sinai, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name or character written in their foreheads. <clears throat> And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. I just love that verse. Isn't that wonderful? And I heard harpers harping with their harps. I just think that's wonderful. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Now, I'm not going to get into a controversy with anybody. I'm not sure if this is a literal number or not. I don't think it is, but it very well could be. I don't know. I'm not sure. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And then, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having, what? Everlasting. An everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. In 1844, did the gospel go to the whole world? It reached every corner, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And then what's the next thing say? What's the next verse? Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. The Lord moves into the Holy of Holies. You see that? And worship Him that did what? The heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Does that sound like something to you? What does it sound like? Go ahead. The says, fourth commandment. It sounds a lot like the fourth commandment, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got a part of the fourth commandment ripped right in there, stamped in it. You know, and we're talking about these people that have the Father's name or character printed upon them. Why do they have it printed upon them? Because this is the seal and the sign of the people who follow God, the Sabbath commandment? Hmm. Well, when the President of the United States puts his sign and seal on something, what does it have? It says the President, right? His name, right? Domain. Pardon me? The domain. The domain, the United States, his territory, right? Doesn't this have all that? <laughs> well, it's, just, it's just pretty easy. A lot of people think this is going to be some kind of mark that you have on you. You know? How many people teach that? Supercomputers, and they're going to do this, that, and the other thing, and all this garbage hog hogwash, the seven years of tribulation down at the end of time. It doesn't even make sense. The only thing that makes sense is historicism. The only thing that makes sense is that what the people believed in the old before they forsook the light that God gave them. Not realizing that they're worshiping Satan. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it's hard things that I'm saying here, but it's the truth. Brothers and sisters, and if you love somebody, you need to tell them the truth. And there followed another angel in verse 8. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What is the wine of the wrath of her fornication? What is that? What does it mean? She spewed out her 